Welcome back, Zero K fans. The finals of the 2v2 one day tournament are upon us. They are starting now. Actually, they're starting once the players decide their start points, but they're basically starting now. We have Saab and Yurga versus Banana I and Banana King Charlie. I guess I'll just call them I and King Charlie then, because I think Banana is a clan name. So I and King Charlie versus Saab and Yurga. And we have a. Well, we have it on Common Catcher Redux, the original Common Catcher Redux, not version 2 that we were using before, although I do much prefer how version 2 looks. I mean, the original. Well, I mean, it's it's okay, I guess. It's just kind of gray. There's no stars in the sky. There's no nebulae in the sky. There's clouds, oddly enough, but not much else. And it's all black. And it's all gray. I think CCR version 2 looks a lot better. But CCR version 1 was the map for the finals, the first map for the finals. Moving on from there to whatever map the losers choose. And it is best of five, by the way, so... It's going to take a lot of wins. It's going to take three wins in order to take this final. So, Saab and Yurga starting at the south. Saab is going for light vehicles. Yurga going for heavy tanks. Not at all surprising. And Banana... Sorry, King Charlie is going for planes. I has not yet chosen his... He's not yet chosen his factory. Going for metal first and going for light vehicles. So, this is very much like with the Spongin Anarchid. Though King Charlie in the place of Anarchid. And let's see, he is going for quite a few Avengers. Once again, much like with Anarchid, it's not going to be that useful early on. Admittedly, Avengers are not bad harassment forces, but they aren't going to be taking air dominance from anybody. That's the thing. They are pretty good harassment forces, but I think that really, it almost be better just to get the same cost in Shadows. However, not a bad scout. I mean, still, a couple of early ones, not a bad scout, but at the same time, it's also given away that King Charlie's going air. Now, I has not yet revealed he's going for... Okay, now he's revealed he's going for Saab. Saab and Yurga aware that I is going for Scorchers. And King Charlie is going... There we go, now he's going to be building some... Actually, okay, he's actually doing exactly what I think he should be doing. He better not be watching the stream. But anyway... He's doing exactly what I think he's doing, or I think he should be doing, getting some shadows, using the Avenger purely as a scout, Although, admittedly, he just saw that there was no airplane here. Like, there's no airport. There's no airplane factory for Saab or Yurga, so he knows he doesn't have to worry about air dominance. He has already got it. Admittedly, he's got it until anti-air forces are built, but that'll be a little while. In fact, neither Saab nor Yurga are focusing on that at all. And Kodachi coming in, however, that's going to be harder to defend against. There is some... I mean, the Scorcher can help a bit, but that's about it. And the thing is... That Kodachi's already taken off two metal extractors so far. One of them's just finished burning to death. The other one's still on the way to its grave. And the Scorcher trying to do what it can, but the Scorcher's going to be taking a lot of damage as well once the Kodachi's able to do so. And two metal extractors for basically free. Saab and Yurga are starting off strong. And King Charlie, I don't think he revealed that he had a... He didn't reveal that he had this shadow quite yet. So if he's able to get around and avoid revealing that, then he should be fine. He should actually be able to get a comp snipe in. However, Saab and Yurga are pretty aware of this. They're pretty keen that comp snipes like this do happen. And Saab actually is a little bit at risk. If Saab's commander goes down, it's going to be a problem. If Yurga's commander goes down, it's not. On the other hand, King Charlie, Beam Laser, E-Cell, and Sa I is Beam Laser, E-Cell. So both I and Charlie are, their commanders are both linchpins. Their points of failure, they could easily get destroyed. Or rather, if they get destroyed, that would easily cripple them. And it looks like Saab going for a bit of an exploratory attack. I don't think he's going to try to kill anything with this. He doesn't have enough Scorches to pull it off. If he manages to, I'd be amazed, but I don't think he's going to be able to. And no, in fact, one of the Scorches, in fact, goes down before even being able to fire off a shot to the Shadows. Revealing whoever that he does have Shadows, that's something that I think that is going to be responded to with Anti-Air. Let's see, where are the Crashers? There's that Crasher. One's probably going to be enough, but still get a few of those, and that should work out pretty well. The Panthers are also very powerful against air, so it's just a matter of whether or not they pick the right commander, and really, I'm not sure there is a right commander. It looks like Yurga is trying to make sure, well, okay, was having the Panther near the commander, but that was a coincidence. So, this shadow here is not, okay, three shadows so far, not quite enough for a full comp, so I believe we need four for that, depends on the level and type of comp. I think support comp level zero is, I think... Three would be enough. Let's see. Ah, get over here. 
800 damage. Yes, three would in fact be enough on a level zero support com, but you need... No, actually, three would also be enough on level one. So yes, three is enough. There are enough, and it looks like King Charlie knows where to attack, or at least has some idea, but also knows that it's going to be a tough shot. The bombers are getting in position, and four bombers are in place. It looks like they are not yet going for it. At the same time, Eyes forces of harassment coming in here, dealing some damage to the Panther, but is he going to go for it? Not quite yet. In fact, no, he's not even going for Commander. He's going to go for sniping the economy first, dealing with that before dealing with the Commander. At the same time, King Charlie expanding to the north, Saab expanding to the south, Yurga expanding up to the east, but that's definitely risky, especially since he's now going to be losing some of that to these bombers. Bombers also trying to get rid of what defenses they can. Getting rid of the defenders that they can get rid of, not a bad idea. Definitely something they can safely do. A little surprised this bomber hasn't really done anything, though. It's just sort of hanging out in the middle of the air. Just orbiting around, not killing this metal extractor or anything. Okay, now it's being commanded to do something, and that command is to kill the panthers. That's not going to work. Those panthers are going to be too... Yep, it just dodged it. Outright dodged it. Not enough splash to work. Dart, however, able to get in while distracted. Nicely done. Eye with that dart. The harassment came in just the right time as the Panthers were getting distracted by the bombers, by the shadows there. Scorchers, however, coming in for Saab to the north, well, from the west side, and they are going to go down as well. Not quite fast enough to avoid the shadows' attack. Unable to fire off any shots that are useful. At the same time, Eye's force is coming in. Actually, Eye and Charlie, King Charlie are doing a great job of harassment right now. Saab is still ahead in economy. Saab and Yurga are still ahead in economy, but that is a great harassment job that's going on there. The southwest, and also, they are defending it well. King Charlie, I'm a bit surprised, is not going for the comm snipe. Not totally surprised. He might not even know which comm to go for. And at this point, Yurga's actually... Sorry, Saab is the one who is very much dependent on his commander. And I think Saab... Yeah, Saab is not too worried at this point. He would stall a bit if he lost the commander, but he wouldn't stall all that much. Actually, he wouldn't stall any more than he currently is. He is, in fact, accessing on metal. In fact, everyone's accessing on metal at this point. There is a caretaker for I, but no one else has actually built any caretakers yet. Turn the map. We do have some Panthers coming in against some Scorchers. They're actually doing pretty well. They are kiting the Scorchers properly, so they are avoiding the brunt of the damage. Now, I's command. At this point, I and King Charlie both have commanders that aren't as useful as they would have been three or four minutes ago. So, an early harassment like that is not going to be as effective. A comm snipe is not going to be as effective as it would have been. However, getting rid of these metal extractors is definitely effective. Panther's doing what they can, and the Scorcher is about to go down, but still able to get rid of two metal extractors just like that. That is huge. And now, now we see what's going on, and it looks like Saab actually did go for an air switch. Yes, he did go for an air factory. That is, well, an attempt to gain air dominance. Looks of it, and comm snipe happening now. Saab's comm has gone down, and Saab loses the E-cell, but he had already prepared for this. He had already gotten what he needed in order to make this work. However... These bombers are going to be going down. A lot of them are going to... Actually, all of them are going to go down. That entire fleet of bombers was just shot down like that. King Charlie has lost all of his air force. He does have a vamp set up trying to regain air control, but at this point... He made good use of it, but at this point he's starting to run out. And actually, that vamp is going down as well. Not even able to do too much before it just gets shot down. Into the ground it goes... Fusion Reactor coming up as well, though admittedly in a rather risky spot. Especially given that Saab is now getting air control. He's now now Saab has taken over the skies, and I is or sorry, King Charlie is no longer on top in the air. King Charlie not going for a fact switch though. He's maintaining what he can in terms of air presence, trying to get more vamps, trying to do what he can to basically block anything off that might come in. And we do have an attack coming in with the shadows, getting rid of a couple scorchers. Not that great of an attack. Really, the best thing to do would be to try to get the fusion reactor once it's done. I don't think he's aware of it, though. These Panthers actually would probably be a better option for doing that as well. They are moving into raid, and it's a fairly powerful raid at that. There's not anything really to defend against this. Some Scorchers from behind, but they aren't going to do that well against this many Panthers all at once. The Vamp, not able to really do too much against this. They cannot hit ground. Avengers can, but Vamps cannot. And no, no Shadows coming in. So Sub, Sub and Yurga are... Fighting back, trying to get the revenge as best as possible. And actually, a Strider Hub is being built for I. He has enough metal, he thinks he can get away with it. But at this point, no, he cannot. These Panthers are going to prove that. 
I and King Charlie are going to lose this game from the looks of it. These levelers are the only chance they have. But the Air Factory about to go down. The Fusion Plant, that's the big target. If that goes down, admittedly, let's make sure he actually can make it go down. But yes, that Fusion Plant is going to be huge. And it looks like no, levelers, enough levelers have been built. The Panthers cannot get rid of it. However, it is known. That is the thing. Your gun sub know that it exists. So, that's basically the target for the bombers at this point. However, they also know that the Strider Hub exists and that Dante is being built. While at the same time, more vamps from King Charlie going down. Saab has really taken air dominance. He's focused very heavily on his air. Keeps focusing on ground too, so he's... He is splitting his money a bit between air and ground, but it's working out. He does have enough, and actually overall, I and King Charlie are way behind in economy. Mostly due to that harassment early on with the Panthers, but still, they're just behind in economy pretty heavily. And there goes that fusion plant! I think that's gonna basically seal it. That fusion plant went down, and from there, so did most of I's energy economy. I mean, he still has enough to build what he can, but not enough to stay in, and the tile has been thrown 10 minutes into the game on Common Catcher Redux, so this is definitely a much better map for 2v2 than 1v1, that's for sure. Hope you enjoyed that, and we'll be back in just a couple minutes with Game 2, so stay tuned. Welcome back, Zero K fans! Game 2 of the finals of the 2v2 One Day Tournament. Saab and Yurgo won Game 1 pretty convincingly, but I and King still have two more games that they have to lose in order to lose, so they might get back from here. See how they can do. We're going to be on Frozen Planet! The map whose name I like the best, actually. It's one of my favorite map names. But yeah, Frozen Planet! It is a small map we saw it before. We actually saw it in the semifinals. Or, yes, one of the semifinals matches. And we're going to start out. We have, once again, interesting. The guys on the east side are going to the southeast both at the same time. Whereas the west side, once again, Saab and Europe. Pick. What game sound? Yeah. Saab. Sorry. But I and Charlie are going. are splitting up. And. Saab and Yurga are focusing on the Southeast. In fact, they are pushing a Black Dawn. That's what they're doing. They're taking advantage of having one game one to push a Black Dawn together. Admittedly, they're just about out of metal storage, but it should work. Should be enough. I think they're actually going to... Wow, how's this going to work? And the thing is, the Black Dawn is going to have to hit each base individually. And they're not that clumped up. Could be useful, though. Could work. I mean, it's only a minute into the game. That Black Dawn could actually pan out. And now, going to a bit more of a normal expansion attempt. And... Economy. But the Black Dawn has been spotted well in advance. King Charlie's probably going to switch over to Jethro's. Yes, he has already started building them. And Vandals for I. This Black Dawn really has one shot. And a racist kiss as well. Everything is prepared in time. This Black Dawn is going to have a something of a feast laid out for it. A feast of death, as it were. But it's going to try what it can. Another few seconds, he's going to come back, take another pass. Got rid of a metal extractor there, but... Trying to get rid of those commanders. And one commander's down. King Charlie has lost his commander. Lost his energy income as a result. That's what it's useful for. I mean, E-Cell energy income is entirely based off your commander. That Black Dawn needs to get out of there, though. It needs to leave. It's not going to be able to. No, it will. Will it be able to, actually? It's a really good question. And no! Just barely going down. Vandal Missile right at the last second over the hill there. That was... That's got to be painful. I mean, admittedly, they did completely crippled King Charlie, but, like, oh man, that's gotta suck. That has gotta hurt. And actually, they're even, yeah. Saab and, I mean, Saab and Yurgar are basically just saying, you know, this isn't even worth it. It's practically game. Because, sheesh, yeah, they just lost. They lost a big chance, because they could have killed Banana I They could have killed Eyes Commander. If they killed Eyes Commander, that would have sealed it. But they didn't. Admittedly, I still has a lot of Air Force. Charlie has a fair ground force, but the thing is, is that if they're able to push in and attack with glaives against those vandals, they could destroy them. If they still get rid of Eyes Commander at this point, there's not a whole lot going for him in terms of energy economy. That would still cripple him. There's still a bit of a chance, and it looks like another Black Dawn being built, but slowly. Not being pushed forward by both commanders, being built slowly, and Cloakabot Factory is also kind of building a bit slowly. Neither of these players have a great economy going right now, and admittedly, 
They do have much better energy than they have metal, that's for sure. They haven't lost their commanders, but... Looks like Yurga is planning on moving up there. No, Saab is moving up there. Yurga is going forward to attack to help out. And at this point, King Charlie is rebuilding his power. He has power... Well, he's a couple power plants, but really not that much. He is still falling behind. I mean, King Charlie is basically out of this game right now. He has 420 metal in terms of military. These three glaives, that's... A, and, well, the Jethro and the glaives, that's it. So right now, Saab and Yurga still have a bit of an advantage. Definitely have a military advantage. And the harassment coming in at the back. Glaive's coming in at the back. Need to get rid of this laser turret. Once they do, they are going to take it. I think I and Charlie are going to lose this game again. Losing a bunch of their economy right here. A rogue has been built, but that's not going to help out one bit. There's no way that's going to help. And Glaive coming in as well in, into King Charlie's base. Gonna, that's not going to matter. I, however, has lost all of his metal income in his base. He's taking a lot of damage and his shield bot factory... Nice little dodge there by Yurga. And at the same time, Yurga is going over. Saab is going to be declaiming that Black Dawn. Well, I can't... Something, at least. Definitely can do that. The second Black Dawn is nearly ready. And that... And Banana's commander is actually in great position to be destroyed. Lost his Shieldbot Factory. Lost his... Most of his metal... Well, some of his metal income is still around, but a lot of his metal income is gone. And his commander is Esau Commander as well. Now, Yurga, however, not losing much of anything yet. Beam Laser E-Cell. Black Dawn's going to come in here, and that's going to find the defenders. It's going to be a bit of a problem. We'll see how much of a problem, though. Enough Glaives should be in place to actually deal with those defenders in advance. But no, that Black Dawn is moving in. It's going to be attacking the commander directly. Ice Commander is just about to be attacked by this Black Dawn. How well is it going to fare? And the answer is pretty well, actually. It's going to get out of there. The Vandals are still around, though, and that was the big threat. That was the thing that actually stopped in advance. And it looks like... I and King Charlie have resigned. Nonetheless, that is game two. Very fast game two. Pulled off. I mean, despite the fact that losing that first Black Dawn, they still pulled it off. So well done to Saab and Yurga. We're going to move on to game three in just a few minutes. And if they win, that's... Well, that's match. That's the tournament. Then Saab and Yurga are the best 2v2 team that are playing in this tournament. Yeah. So, really, I and... King Charlie have to win the next three games in order to win. That's what it comes down to. So, stay tuned for that. Welcome back, Zero K fans, to the possibly final match of the finals of the twenty, the two v two one day Christmas. Oh, I'm getting mixed up in my tournaments. All day, I've been fine. Not mixing up the Acron Christmas tournament with the 0k 1-day 2v2 tournament that's going on today. So this is the 0k 1-day 2v2 tournament that's going on today, February 22nd. And this is going to be possibly the final match. It's going to be on Icy Run of all places. I, seriously, Icy Run. This is versus I and Charlie versus Saab and Yurga. We are on Icy Run. Don't ask me why. Because Icy Run... Do I even have to say it? Do I have to even say, this is the map? This is it. There's only maybe a dozen metal spots. I see this being played a lot in the big teams room. Just, I, I don't even know. I don't even actually... Edge fog, but I don't even understand. There should be clearer which part of the map is actually the map. I just don't get it. But yeah, this map... Tiny map. I and King Charlie wanted... Or sorry, I and King Charlie over here wanted it. King Charlie going for vehicles. Saab going for spiders. King and Tur Yurga going for vehicles as well. Yurga going straight for Dominatrix. At this point, might as well. Won two games pretty much effortlessly. So, well, last game, actually, well, not quite effortlessly. They actually, that was a bit of a challenge last game. But they did go for a cheese strategy. Actually, I think the first game... No, the first game was okay. The first game on Comic Catcher was actually pretty fair. But the second game was just cheese out. So much cheese. I could spread it on toast. I would too, but it's not physical cheese. Preferably brie. I like brie cheese. Uh, anyway. Orders aside, we have Yurga coming in. Bit of harassment, a bit of scouting. Not able to really do too much damage, but able to see that King Charlie is moving forward. Able to see that there is some forward expansion. Not a whole lot beyond that. Incidentally, that was using King Charlie's dart. That was... The Dominator took that over. That was King Charlie's dart that just died. That wasn't anything else.
Also, Forbidding Angel pointing out that Bree is good on rye, and actually, I don't think I've ever tried that. I'm not, I don't really have any rye bread available. Or Bree cheese, for that matter. But anyway, Dar trying to do what he can to avoid getting killed, and Puppy, no, Glaives. <laughs> this is Puppy for a second. Glaives coming in as well for I, and King Charlie's going to be able to, well, not kill that Dominatrix, that's for sure. One Scorcher is not enough. The Scorcher being taken over in time and able to start dealing some damage to these Glaives. Probably not kill them. Kill one of them, but die in the process. And Sob's Commander going to be able to finish the rest of them off. The Blight Particle Beam, as well as E-Cell. So, Sob's Commander is a bit of a liability. Yurgis is not. King Charlie's is also not. And the thing is that this map, well, it supports a lot of energy. supports a lot of overdrive, but really doesn't support a lot of metal. I think all the metal spots have basically been taken at this point. In fact, yeah, I think that's actually the case. All the metal spots have been, or just about all the metal spots have been taken. It's like this one over here. And this one over here. Oh wait, no, this one over here is being taken. Yeah, this one down here is the only free metal spot at the moment. And that's probably not going to last too long. Although that actually might be the reason. I think I and King Charlie are going to fall a bit behind because they don't have that metal spot for them. That might just do it. That's that's two metal income right there. And they could use it, especially with the Dominatrix in here. The Dominatrix along with some Levelers and Ravagers. All the Light Force is being supplied by Yurga. Sorry, all Light Force is being supplied by King Charlie. That's what I meant to say. King Charlie is supplying most of Yurga's army at this point. Which is the really annoying thing about Dominatrices. Is that you're basically donating an army until you can kill the Dominatrix. But it's, if it's like three or four Dominatrices, good luck with that without a very large army. Because your army's going to have to be able to fight itself in the process or without some sort of artillery. So I'm going to kill it well in advance. So at this point, Yurga basically has the south side of the map. And... So, uh, Yurga and Sob, of course, the east side of the map. I mean, at this point, this is where Yurga's becoming a real pain for the banana team. And at this point, a scythe coming in as well. Wow, that is something to have taken. Took a scythe, trying to assassinate the commander with that, and won't be able to successfully do so, but still, that is going to be some damage. More units coming in, and another scythe trying to get rid of this dominatrix, and successfully able to do so! Allowing the Scorcher to deal some damage to the leveler before dying itself, but most importantly, getting rid of the dominatrix. And no further dominatrix is forthcoming. Yurga does not have another dominatrix to be fielded yet. Though at this point, the Scorcher is not going to do too great. However, at the same time, Sob's forces in the north, the Venoms in the north, and the Hermits are going to get rid of Ai's commander, and that's going to get rid of... Actually, Ai's... What is Ai's energy economy, and why is it so low? But it doesn't matter, it is now going to be, well, that much lower. Actually, I guess it was just because the Esau was actually stunned out. Yeah, I has basically no energy economy. King Charlie still does have some. King Charlie just has a bit of a chance here. It's going to come down to proper positioning, but that's really tough. And the Venom here is also going to be extremely difficult to deal with. I really doesn't have a whole lot to work with at this point. His energy is basically zero. Or very low. In fact, I'm a little bit unsure where he's getting his energy income from. I think possibly a worker? I don't know. I don't see any power plants. Yeah, I don't see any power whatsoever for I at the moment. I think he might just be getting it from King Charlie, maybe. No, not not wouldn't be. I don't know. That I really have no idea. In fact, King Charlie's getting it entirely from his commander, so there's no power plants on the map for them. There's a couple for Yurga. That's about it. That's... That's Icy Run for you. Although it looks like King Charlie trying to... Oh, he had forces too close together. That was a mistake. He needs to get them in a line. The biggest thing you need to do is make your forces in a nice line to encircle your opponents. But he had them clumped up. Still able to retreat pretty effectively. Able to heal up when he needs to. King Charlie's not quite out yet, but I certainly is. I really has no chance. King Charlie's not even pushing up to help I out. Oh no, he is. Never mind. I missed that. This, these Scorchers are coming in, and they are going to help him out. Oh, yeah. Sprang pointed out that perhaps the player list liberally rounds up. And you know what? That might actually be the case. I'm trying to think, what would possibly provide energy? I don't think the factory does. King Charlie's commander! King Charlie's commander being... There's a dive going on, and that's going to take him out. And that is going to kill King Charlie's economy. He might be able to push back from this. He might be able to possibly get out of here. No, I can't. I's energy is now zero. Must have been a bit being bled over from King Charlie. But now, none of that. Scythe is coming to try to get rid of the spider factory, but it's too little too late. Unfortunately, able to get rid of it nonetheless. But, that being said, Yurga's commander actually also going down. Yurga losing his commander. 
that's a bigger blow to King Charlie than it was to Yurga. Losing those Scorchers in the process of killing the commander. That will not really work, unfortunately, for him. Whoa, what's that? Oh, right. That will not work. So Yurga is basically going to be... Well, he's going to basically get through this, no problem. I and King Charlie are definitely pushing very hard, but no, they're going to resign. That is game, that is match, that is the finals. Sub and Yurga are the best team in 0k according to this tournament. Although admittedly, there are a lot of teams that could exist in 0k. But still, in this tournament, best team. Very well done to Sav and Yurga. And I feel kind of lucky that I was able to follow them from the very start of this tournament to the very end. Because a lot of matches are going on simultaneously. I don't think anyone else is actually casting. I don't know for sure. But yeah, that was... That's game. That That's it. That's everything. That's the tournament. I hope you enjoyed watching. And... Thank you once again for watching. Saab and Yurga. They win, and Banana Banana Team gets second place. Anakin the Sponge get third place. Still, Icy Run. I don't know why they went for Icy Run. I gotta be honest, that was that was surprising. They didn't even seem to try to cheese out on it either. I don't know. That was weird. But anyway. Thank you once again for watching. And Oh yeah, Ford pointing out the Dominatrix pretty much won the game, and yeah, it kind of did. It was a combination of things, though. The Dominatrix really helped, but I think what probably won the game more so was the comps was the spiders to the north. That really sealed the deal for Banana, for, for I, I should say. And then Char King Charlie just got knocked down from the bottom. I mean, it was... The, the Dominatrix didn't last that long. It was the Leveler and the Ravager that were stopping the Scorchers from doing all that much damage after killing the Dominatrix. Anyway... Thank you once again for watching, and that's it for me tonight, or well, this afternoon actually, it's 1pm, but for a lot of you it is night, so have a good night everybody.